Well, hello. Great to be here. This is JV Live on Hot 93.3. How you doing? It's a good day, isn't it? It's a good day. It's a sunny day in Lagos. Yes. So, what's going on? Let's talk about something that's been on my mind for a while. And I'll really like you to contribute and let me know your thoughts. Um, so, on Twitter, I think something school, not something was trending about um, school not being um a deterrent um school not determining how well your life turns out uh, especially in nigeria and a lot of people had things to say about the fact that you know um you go to these nigerian schools and there are no you don't have anything there are no facilities there are no equipment to nothing to to justify what you are studying so you spend four or five years um studying a particular course and you don't necessarily get into the practicals of that course so you don't you know you don't even know what 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 the course really um is about i i worked somewhere where a graduate didn't even know what a memo was and there's so many people who study um, certain courses that would need practicals maybe if you're studying mass communication like i did i never saw a studio in my entire study in school until I left and looked for a job. <laughs> so you just have all of this theory that are, is just really boring and very, you can't apply them to real life. You can't apply them to jobs. I can't even remember anything that I, stu- uh, I any of the courses I studied in school that, that is relevant to my life right now. And, you know, and you know with with the strike and all you spend so many years trying to get out of trying to get something that you may not necessarily need because nigerian education has refused to evolve like everything else is evolving in the world nigerian education um refuses to evolve and it doesn't even happen to just the university i i have kids and i read oh dear do you see some of the things they write in children's books these days I have read some of my children's books and you have things like you have things like father goes to work and mommy stays at home to take care of the dishes. I'm like, this is 2019. Who are the people endorsing these textbooks? I'm like, and I'm looking at my kids and like, do, am I staying at home? <laughs> I'm your mom. Do I, do, am I staying at home taking care of the dishes? Who pays your fees, yo? <laughs> you know, so it's just, um, uh, and then there's so, some other books. I mean, there was this particular one that trended for a while where it said head is for carrying load. I mean, like, you just keep wondering what's going on. Is, isn't there any, isn't there a structure, a ministry of education that gets to look at all of these things that are being used in, in this school? So I find myself all the time re-educating my children. I don't care what they teach them in school. I mean, I, so this what this is what happened some weeks back because I'm part of the, the school, the school's WhatsApp with the parents that's the only whatsapp group i'll ever be in in my life okay so and it's on mute by the way so the school whatsapp with the parents and um they were talking about something and then i was coming from the i'm from i was coming from from um a website where some children in some foreign first world country had done some kind of technological miracle some advanced technological stuff that i can't even remember what it was but i was really I was really excited about it. There were 13 year olds and 15 year olds. And then you, so I left that and I, I saw the, I went to WhatsApp and then I saw them, I saw a message from the school and they said, Oh, they're just so excited that our children just learned how to make paint. And I'm like, yo, I'm just leaving a website where 13 year olds are creating the next technological miracle in the world. And I just go straight to WhatsApp and somebody is telling me to be excited because my kid knows how to make paint, you know? So, <laughs> so I was just, I just, I was just miserable for the whole day. And I, and because I have very deep thoughts and I'm like, what is going on? Sometimes they send pictures of, oh my God, they just painted the back of a t-shirt with an X or a number. And I, okay. And then another one, they made slippers. It's just all of these random things that mean absolutely nothing to what they what what their life is going to be all about and we pay all of this big big money just to learn how to make paint okay so it just got me thinking about the nigerian dream we've heard so much about the american dream we're not even americans but we know the american dream i remember when i went to new york and i, I when i saw because you have to take the taxi water 
when I saw the Statue of Liberty, I just cried. I, just, I don't know why. It was, it, I just cried. It was such a beautiful reminder that no matter how crazy it gets in this third world, some people are getting it right. I mean, America is not exactly all that right now, but you know, it was, it, it was just fun. I was in 2016. It was fun to just be there with so many people, so many nationalities and races, and just to look up to something that tells you that you can be anything you want to be and nobody has a right to stop you. And it's just a powerful message. And I can't wait for my kids to just feel that symbol in their life. So anyways, I'm talking too much. I want to know what you think the Nigerian dream should be. I'm not asking you what it is because there is no Nigerian dream, apparently. What do you think the Nigerian dream should be? I really want to know what you think. When I come back, I'll be taking your messages. It's, um, you can send your message to WhatsApp. It's 0818 And I'll be reading the American dream and getting some, some quotes from it that can just help us, um, you know, just it's always good to go back to these things and see how do we fit into the real, the real deal that is called life that other countries are getting right. So tell me what you think the Nigerian dream should be. I'll be reading the American dream and I'll be getting stuff from it that could just help us uh, and all of that. Okay, so I have Root Boy, Double Double featuring Fino and Olamide. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at hotfm underscore Lagos. And we're also on Facebook at um, hotfm Lagos. You can follow me on Instagram at Joy Bewaji and Facebook, Joy E.C. Bewaji. We're talking about the Nigerian dream inspired by the American dream. The dream we all know, even if we're not Americans. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read here. What started the American dream? Um, the American dream was apparently invented in 1931 by a historian, James Trussload Adams. He was referring to that dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for every man with opportunity for each according to his ability or achievement. With opportunity for each according to his ability or achievement. Does that in any way resonate with what you think the Nigerian dream should be? Do you feel that people who put in a lot of work, do you think they are getting the life they deserve? Do you think that um, when people go to school and they come out, they get the environment, the environment encourages, encourages them to um, achieve according to how much they have, um, they have worked to get their degree? I heard recently that it was in Saudi Arabia, um, a thousand doctors in Nigeria were trying to get into Saudi Arabia. I mean, we are losing these professionals because we can't even give them <laughs> hospitals that actually work. So they are all running away to places that uh, they can at least practice their profession. I, don't, I said this before, I don't know how frustrating it must be for a doctor who spends all those years trying to get a degree and then you get the degree and you can't even get the state or the government to give you the right environment where you can actually leave out your real purpose of being a doctor. You can't save lives. People are dying and you are helpless. It's just so sad. Like, you know what to do, right? You can't do it because it's just nothing available. So you literally see people die and you just can't do anything. What are you going to do? Of course, you're going to find, you're going to try and find a way out of your situation. It's so sad. You know, it's so sad when we say these things because we don't seem to understand how, how dire the situation is, how much we are losing out here, you know, because we have refused to make people who work hard, who study hard, to actually have an environment that encourages them to do well. It's really sad. Um, so when we have things like um, musicians being the inspiration that we get it just says a lot because we i did talk about the um the bb ninja um audition and how it seemed every youth was present there if we had a society that actually worked and people could do stuff and make money and live with their dignity you know you wouldn't have people dying just to be part of a reality show reality shows are valid but the the concentration the attention it gets is obviously because we are deprived in so many ways and we don't know what to do with all of the time we have because there are no facilities and no amenities and just no nothing nothing so you find yourself okay anyhow i'm going to have to survive 
And that is why we even um we, we even applaud Yahoo Yahoo these days because you know it's it's not it's nothing anymore. It's just nothing. People just want to survive and then they have all of pe and they have all, all of these people making it, you know, telling you that it's valid. I mean, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna die. You have to survive and all of that. And is that how we want our own dream to be defined? Is that what we want the Nigerian dream to be? Where anyhow, anyhow, let's just make it work anyhow. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be legit. It doesn't have to be valid. Just anyhow. And, 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 you know, is that what we want? One thing that really bothers me about the Nigerian situation is how we cannot even, we cannot even, um, we're not even allowed to, to talk about how people make money. It's just this crazy thing. Everything abroad is transparent. I mean, you have to know how people make money. In Nigeria, even when a journalist, that's why we have journalism the way it is, where people just don't do their jobs. They just wait for copy and paste from BBC or CNN. Because when you try to really do your job, you are told that, ah, what's wrong with you? You are so bitter. Why are you so bitter about somebody's success? Go and make your own money. You know, I just talk and talk like, this is your job. Your job is to find out how did you make money? What are you worth? What are you really worth? Is it legit? That's somebody's job. Now, if that person tries to do that job and then you go saying like, look at you, you are poor. You are just focusing on somebody else's riches. Why don't you go and try and get your own money? <laughs> You're going to discourage that person from actually having a job that requires him to do the job right. So these days, when you ask a simple question, how did he make his money? Ah, mm -mm, you are done for. You poverty wretched person. Why don't you go and make your own money? I mean, like, no. Every country, every, <laughs> every society must be able to trace how people make money. But apart from the fact that it is legal, it's also good for the, our children to see how wealth is created. It's good for them to see how these things are done. That is how you grow the leaders of tomorrow. It's even funny, we don't even use that term anymore because, you know, we used to be the leaders of tomorrow, but we never became the leaders of tomorrow because our forefathers are still in <laughs> They're still, you know, they're still leading in every sphere of the Nigerian um, society. All right. So I still want to know your thoughts. What do you think is the Nigerian dream? Inspired, of course, by the dream we all know. The American dream. Is there anything we can take from the American dream, which I'll be sharing later, that we can use to define what our dreams are? What do you think is a Nigerian dream? I have Love Made Me Do It by Cheryl. Dream is a national ethos of the United States. The set of ideals, democracy, rights, liberty, opportunity, and equality, in which freedom includes the opportunity for prosperity and success as well as an upward social mobility for the family and children achieved through hard work in a society with few barriers. In the definition of the American dream by James Truslow Adams in 1931, life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone with opportunity for each according to ability or achievement, regardless of social class or circumstances of birth. Powerful, right? So that is... <laughs> That is the American dream. And there are some things I've been able to get out of that particular quote. Um, like I said, seeing the Statue of Liberty when I traveled was such a beautiful thing for me. It signifies new opportunities for immigrants. Um, and it's an iconic symbol of the Amer American dream. What is the symbol of the Nigerian dream? Do we have a symbol? <laughs> when I was very young, I, I remember when I was young, when we would drive, I would see the National Theater. And because I had an uncle who was a Navy officer, I always was so excited because that was exactly the cap he used to wear. You know, the National Theater, um, the roof, the, the design, the architecture, the architecture of the, of the National Theater is actually the cap of the naval cap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was so easy for me to connect to that um, structure when I was a child because I had a very, my, my favorite uncle was a Navy officer and he always had that cap. So the first time I saw, I was so excited. And for me growing up, that was a symbol of, and, you know, he wasn't educated, my uncle, and he, he did well in the Navy. Of course, there's a, part, there's, a place, there's a point where he can't go further, but he did leave very well. And for me, that was a symbol of something. That, and he was really hardworking. He just missed education when he was supposed to, you know, had um, poverty and 
an old hardship that is, you know. But he 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 married well. He he had kids. He had a lovely home, and that's it. That symbolized something for me as a child because I knew he wasn't educated. There's so many things, of course, because I am. <laughs> I was in school, so there are things we, you know, there are some things we talk about, and that he couldn't read some things, and you know, but it was cool because he was he was doing so well, you know, real dignity, real labor, and and he had that really fancy cap, and you know what white does for children? You just see your uncle in white, and you're like, oh my goodness, I have to be a navy officer too, <laughs> you know. And then when you see that building, the National Theatre, it just meant something to me. So for a, for a child, for me as a child, it was a symbol until it became a wreck. You know, it's, it's a wreck right now, you know. And so for my kids, I, there's just nothing for them to look up to in Nigeria. So what do we do? We feed them with Netflix. We feed them with Disney Channel. We we feed them. And then when it's holiday, we get them out of this country. <laughs> we take them to Dubai, you know. And it's so sad because there's no representation of anything in this country for our children. All right, so I I would like to know what your Nigerian dream is. I would like you to share it. You can send me a WhatsApp message on 818 008 9933 It used to be the National Theatre for me, but now I don't know. I feel I feel very sorry for my kids and you know our children because it just gets worse every day. So what what are they holding on to? What can they see? I have a message here from Lola Day. Let me read. Lola Day says, "Hi, Joy." Hmm, let me think a little. So I think Two Faces, for instance, captures my thoughts on the Nigerian dream on the Nigerian dream well. A society of equal opportunity, fairness and justice, where power supply doesn't continue to be a myth. I'll say that again. <laughs> where power supply doesn't continue to be a myth. Thank you, sister. A place where you are sure that your skills and hard work are sufficient to earn a decent living. And you don't have to know some big man somewhere or take on the role of a psychophant to survive. Oh, this is chilling. I'm going to say this again. A place where you're sure that your skills and hard work are sufficient to earn a decent living. And you don't have to know some big man somewhere or take on the role of a psychophant to survive. I just, I can, I can just keep, I can clap from now to tomorrow for this. Thank you so much, Doladi. For, share, for coming up with this at such short time, <laughs> short notice, you know, it's just an hour show. So I know the restrictions people have before they finish typing and all is gone. Like, oh, Joy is off already? Okay. <laughs> so just try, okay? Try and if you can send in your Nigerian dream or what you think the Nigerian dream should be, because I don't even think we have one. So what you want it to be, I would like to read it. So regarding the American dream I read, there are some things I took out from it. You're right. You're right to life. The, your right to the pursuit of happiness, your right to the pursuit of happiness, your right to freedom, uh, to, to be free of discrimination, your right to control what happens to your own body, your right to con control what happens to your own body, especially women. I mean, it's always so sad when you hear that women go for concerts and they are raped. They are raped. People are around and they are getting molested. And then you come on social media hoping, we are always hoping that people can have some sense and critique this thing with, with fairness. But then you come and you hear things like, what is she doing out there by 11 o'clock? Shouldn't she be at home? She doesn't she know she's a woman. What does that even mean? Everybody has a right to be anywhere they want to be at any time. It is up to the government to protect their citizens. It is up to you to respect who they are. They have a right to go to clubs. They have a right to go to concerts. They have a right to do anything. Do you understand? And you don't have a right to abuse them, to take advantage of them. No society, no real society is built like that. All right. And also, we, I have more here. Um, right to fair trial. Oh, my God. Have you suffered the Nigerian justice system before? You will literally lose your hair. No, your hair will literally just be falling off your head. Everything is slow. Everything, it takes forever. And that is why people don't go to court. They just go to God. And you know, God is chilling right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like in the days of the bible where he just comes straight up and burns somebody alive <laughs> so we all go to god like god would judge god would judge that's the problem you don't grow a society like that there has to be justice people must know that the system works just to control what's going on and also the right to be free from slavery the right to freedom of speech and freedom of thought and also 
the right to opportunities in the land. We all should have opportunities. The opportunities available should be available for everyone because everyone is equal. In a real society, everyone should be equal. It doesn't matter what they do, what job they do. And that is why we talk about the dignity of labor. If you go abroad, <laughs> you don't have a right to insult the man that washes the toilet. No, he is not subservient to you. In Nigeria, everyone is trying to be the big boss. And that's why we have this term, do you know who I am? Because we always have to show who we are because we feel like our position makes us a, 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 higher, a higher being, a higher human being than the next person. There should be dignity of labor. We should respect everyone. Even the person who goes into the soccer way to bring out your mess should be respected because if he doesn't do his job, guess what? Your whole mess will be on the floor. How about that? All right. So send your messages to WhatsApp, your Nigerian dream, your Nigerian thoughts, what you think the Nigerian dream should be to 0818-008-9933. I'd like to know what you think. Okay. I have Ice Prince here. Control number featuring Jesse Jacks. Okay. Why is GIV Live? It's GIV Live. We're talking about the Nigerian dream. Um, I'd like to know what you think. I have a message here on WhatsApp from... Oh my God, it disappeared. Okay, you're going to fix that. <laughs> I have a message here. On, um, I have another one though. Right here. Um, let me see. This is from Okoro. Okoro Chidoze says, The Nigerian dream on the street is simply to hustle and escape from the pool of poverty surrounding one and escape into that social strata of comfort to send the children to Ivy League schools and have enough connections in the political and social strata realms to make one phone call and get a favor for someone or get someone out of trouble. Mm, interesting. So that's his, that is what he thinks the Nigerian dream is. I would like to know what you all think what the, what, um, the Nigerian dream represents. Oh, Ambia, yeah, I can see my WhatsApp now. <laughs> okay. I have Ify here. Ify says, hi, Joy. Hi, Ify. Simple. I dream of a Nigeria where our leaders are, patriot, uh, are patriotic um, enough to share the resources equally in Nigeria with ethno-religious conflicts where um, without ethno-religious co conflict, where the citizens are just described as Nigerians. Every pro problem we have, and I make bold to say, are centered on leadership and bigotry. Thank you so much, Ifi, for that. Um, so I still have, I still have stuff I want to talk about regarding the American dream that I read. There's a part of the American dream that talks about social mobility. And that's something I really want to talk about. Social mobility has to do with how you move up the social strata. Like, you know, you have the right to change social status, you know, so maybe, and that's, I think that's the biggest part of the Nigeria and the American dream where you may be from a poor home. You go to school at a school that really works and teaches you what you need to know for evolving times. You graduate, you get a job, like you, you, you get to work with anybody, any kind of person in that office. You, you meet people who probably never been to the slums before you, everybody's there, all kinds of people, because you know what your education gives you that leverage to now become whatever it is you want to become that is why you spend such a long time studying right so you become that and then you have the you have the opportunity to pursue your career to a point where you can be the managing director of a company that is the american dream you, you're just a kid a six-year-old kid from the ghetto right and you can't afford anything you get a scholarship at some point because that's what societies do you're able to take care of very smart kids to go to school you go to school you get out of school and you're able to work in places you never dreamed was possible because of your background and then you rise to a point where you are not because you know the managing director not because you are sleeping with his daughter not because um you were subservient to him and you're some psychophant online talking crap up talking trying to trying to raise him up to a standard that he doesn't belong not because of anything but because of the fact that you are indeed um, you you deserve you deserve that position because you have what it takes he doesn't need to know you he doesn't care about your tribe he doesn't care about the color of your skin 
you just know that this person knows this deal he knows this job and it's only fair that he he is you know he gets to this point in life where he is at the top of his game that is a dream that we are always we keep dreaming about it in nigeria but it's just never true because you have to know somebody to know somebody to know somebody to bloody hell know somebody before you are able to move from one place to the other and for people who are not extroverts and don't have that much psycho fan bone in them it's so frustrating like isn't it enough that i'm smart no isn't it enough <laughs> that i'm willing to work <laughs> okay i have Vumi fanny here on whatsapp she says hi joy my number one nigerian dream would be for a revolution to take place like a recycling in those top positions because for any social and economic development that needs to come through the system and the land has to have the system and the land has to be clear of old and worn out rules laws mentality misguiding us just look out the issue of the collapsed building that happened in lagos a terrible thing had to happen before they realized the buildings were old it shows how dormant our present government are is my nigerian dream is a revolution thank you bumi for that i have another message here i'm gonna just read it it's from prisca okay it's right here prisca says prisca says um hello joy the nigerian dream is constant power supply security good roads ne good road network free education good governance and most importantly robust economy this will solve most of the ills in our society i totally agree thank you for sharing prisca i have another one here from shoyemi shoyemi says um Good morning, Joy. Most Nigerians don't have a dream beyond gathering material things that they can't account for or keep records of, which is very sad. Most don't even train their kids to have a dynasty after they are gone. What is, what, what is, was in the 60s and 70s? Work hard at getting a good education and use your skills to get a good job. Build conglomerates which become an empire for generations yet unborn without stealing like what we have politicians and businessmen doing today all right thank you um you know shoyemi and another thing i like about the american dream is the fact that you know i talked a bit about the education part the Amer the american dream also protects the uneducated right whether you have education whether you don't, you don't have education you're all human beings you're all equal and if wh whatever job you find anyone doing your job as a human being is to respect that person respect that person so when you see obama you know giving high five to the cleaner and all of that it's not for it's not a performance of some sort it is what the society should be i'm not saying america is perfect i mean we all know it's not right <laughs> but there is an ethos right and because the ethos is there it helps guide the people who want to be guided but what ethos do we have in nigeria to even guide people who want to be guided there's nothing so what we have here is hustle hustle make money and get respect and then everybody is willing to do and that's why you have things like people you hear things like people eating poop coprophilia or something you hear people uh, taking panties you hear people blood it, it's just crazy things like what are you people doing because the ultimate goal for the nigerian is to have money anyhow just have it yo because because when you have money you can buy the system and buy respect because there is no structure for anything so money allows you to buy these things and you can't blame the common citizen right you you blame the, the fact that there are people in leadership who should lay down the ethos of a community to guide them i really believe a lot of people will be a lot of people don't want to hustle they just want to live a simple life with with respect but if you live a simple life you are disrespected in nigeria and then people are like you know what what the hell why do i have to suffer this okay we're all going to make this money together so you can respect me you can respect the brand of my car you know and it's such a terrible legacy to leave for our children i don't want to leave that kind of legacy for my kids i don't want them to think that money is what defines them and money is good because it's good it's good you can make this stuff right it's, it shouldn't now be the entire purpose of your life where you're pursuing it like you're pursuing it like ah something's gonna happen and you're ready to do just about anything to get it that's just wrong okay so please send your messages it's a bit you know it's a passionate topic for me so send your message for me to me i would like to know your nigerian dream or what you think the nigerian dream should be it's whatsapp it's 93.3 i have yvonne here she says in nigeria 
future in Nigeria future generations will be proud to call home in Nigeria where our proposed vision goes beyond basic amenities in Nigeria where to hammer is not the, to chase but to impact of the wait, in Nigeria where to hammer is not the chase but to the impact of the hammer to make a banging effect <laughs> okay in Nigeria where I better pass my neighbor is not what makes us want to do better but how can I help my neighbor better and by this I don't mean throwing money at them on Instagram to trend but by adding sustainable value to them in Nigeria where men and women are given equal opportunities to thrive not based on gender but because of their abilities all right thank you Yvonne and this is obviously something she mentioned here that just draws and draws me to something that we that, that we do a lot here um, so the, the idea that someone is sick and or someone is lacking and then we always have to come together on social media to help that person. It is so, you know, we, we're so used to that situation right now. We don't know that. It's so sad because there's so many things the government should be doing. Somebody, people are dying of cancer, of cancer in a country of 170 million. We don't have the facilities to treat this d disease. And we always have to keep running to certain places with lots and lots of money. And before you get to that place, the person is dead. And then over and over again, it's the same story. And I just keep wondering, what kind of dream do we have to leave for our, our children? I remember one time, this whole pension thing, where old people would line up every day for their money. And then people start to faint right there under the sun because they are old and tired and weary. And I remember a cousin of mine saying, these people work so hard for this country they were diligent at their job and look at old age look at how look at how cruel nigeria is to the old and you're telling me that i have to go get a day job in this country and that's a young teenager saying this it's so sad because when they look around the people who seem to be living good are not the people who are you know living you know having a job and doing the right things they just look around and see that the people who just seem to hustle in ways that we can't even unaccountable hustling just make a lot of money and they're like you know what i'd rather just settle for this that is what we're leaving for our kids and it's really sad i have a whatsapp message here um it says hello joy i am olaide and my nigerian dream is to have a country where people with diseases such as hiv hepatitis b sickle cell anemia are not segregated or disadvantaged during job seeking exercises i love your show a lot thank you so much olaide I also want to mention that even disability, the way we treat it, there's so many places where you go, malls, banks, they don't have any, any facility for the disabled. They don't even have for full human beings. You know, it's, everything is not working. I really wonder how disabled people survive the dignity. We strip them of the, like they can't even, they can't go to many places. They can't, they can't do a lot because they are disabled. Disability shouldn't stop you from having a full life. No, it shouldn't really, you know, and it's just so sad that, you know where we are now in nigeria you just lose an arm and that's it nobody employs you you can't use so many facilities because they don't have arrangements for your condition and you just feel useless and then the next thing you have to do is beg like no yo it's wrong you don't just because you don't have an arm and a leg doesn't necessarily mean you're a beggar a society should ensure that your brain i mean what scientist died some what's his name again he was he didn't all his body parts were not working anymore but they cherry they, they preserved his his brain and he didn't have to become a beggar. That is what, that is some of the things the society should provide. And that is the kind of dream we want our children to look up to and say, this is how society provides for us. This is how it looks out for us. Okay, I have another message here from Buki. She says, um, hello, Joy. Um, good morning. To, um, to be, as she said, this one is hard though. <laughs> to be wealthy, successful, and enviable should be the Nigerian dream to rob your wealth and success in the noses uh, not to rob your your wealth and success in the noses of lesser people uh not to drop name not to name drop at every given you know, opportunity who you who you know or associate with not um to be well traveled and change your location to be well traveled um to um not to be defined by designer wares not to not to be defined by mingling with the rich and famous um not to be not to buy an expensive car and and not and not be able to necessarily maintain your life and not to leave the overpriced island environment with bad infrastructure okay she sounds really angry 
I don't blame her. You know, I don't blame her. So yeah, so that's the Nigerian. That's what people are saying. I think, you know, is I mean, it's just a waste of time to think that the government's gonna do anything about it. But I'm just saying, I think in our little space, with our children, our nieces, our nephews, our cousins, if we can help them define their own dream, their own Nigerian dream, I do that a lot with my kids. I like, you know, yo. <laughs> This is what you should be. This is what you should focus on. This is what life is going to throw at you. These are the bullets you should get ready for. And these are these are ways to protect yourself from these things. This is what Nigeria is, but this is what the bigger world is. So you have to feed your children with all of these things. You have to build a dream for them. They are Nigerian dream for them. That's your job. And it's so funny, yo. It's so funny how a Nigerian goes abroad and is doing well, like Anthony Joshua. <laughs> And we're always so quick to carry him and remind him that he's in Nigeria. No, you didn't train that guy to be a boxer. You, his success has nothing to do with us. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The boxers in Nigeria who are still here are impoverished. They are deprived. So when people move, there's a, there's a little boy right now. He's, he was homeless, I think. And now he's the best chess, chess player in, in, is in America or London. I'm not sure. He, he's a homeless Nigerian boy. See Nigerians all over that place now. Oh, he's a Nigerian boy. The resilience, the resilience. We, we keep saying this, the resilience. You don't have chess anything in Nigeria. He wouldn't have gone very far with his chess anything in Nigeria. He goes abroad and he's the best chess player of a certain category. And the first thing we do is remind him he's in Nigeria. We're like this wicked extended relatives who we have no bearing with. We, don't, we, didn't, we didn't grow up with them. We don't, they didn't care about us. They didn't, they didn't do anything for us. When we suffered pneumonia as children, they weren't there. They harassed our mothers. But then when you grow up and become something, they start hailing you. Hey, our family, our sister, our blood. That's how we are as Nigerians. We just we wait for people to go abroad and become something. And then we don't let anybody hear what they gain. No, you don't get to own something you did not develop. That's how it works. <laughs> I'll be rounding up after this song, Miss You Bad, Mr. Easy featuring Bonaboy. <laughs> 